Mind Blower. The historic prize of visiting Fun Spot Kissimmee and Fun Spot overall. This Gravity Group wooden roller coaster is one of only eight inverting wooden roller coasters in the world. With Gravity Group coasters being pretty good modern wooden coasters and inverting wooden coasters being hyper unique. How good is Mind Blower? Find out in this review. The Gravity Group is known for making fantastic yet enjoyable family coasters, such as ZDT's Switchback or Sesame Place's Oscar's Wacky Taxi, and larger coasters like Voyage at Holiday World and Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. A few mid-sized wooden coasters like the Kima's Boardwalk's Boardwalk Bullet. Smaller family coasters have received strong praise from coaster enthusiasts for their mix of airtime and wild feel. Mind Blower, themed to a mind exploding, as a mid-sized gravity group coaster offers larger thrills than their smaller models, with an 80-foot drop. The gimmick for this coaster is its rare inversion, a piscaresque corkscrew over the station. If a Gravity Group coaster isn't enough reason for you to seek out this coaster, being able to ride an inverting wooden coaster should pique your interest. The restraints are the common Timberliner trains that are common on all newer Gravity Group coasters. These restraints are nice and relatively comfortable for a family wooden coaster. I feel, such as with ZDT Switchback, that they don't allow for as much airtime as I'd like, but with how wild most Gravity Group coasters are, this isn't a significant problem as these coasters will deliver in other areas while still offering decent drop feelings and some airtime. The problem with Mind Blower is, since it goes upside down, the ride ops will push these restraints in all the way on almost every single ride. This is completely understandable since Fun Spot doesn't want any type of accident. And honestly, it is surprising that such a loose restraint that just comes in from the side is capable of being on a looping roller coaster to begin with. I did get a beautiful ride with a slightly loose restraint in the back row on my most recent visit. This made the rest of the coaster run way better. But I was holding on to my restraint during the inversion just to make sure everything was good. Problem with being stapled by the restraint isn't even that this negates airtime or otherwise lessens various elements on Mind Blower. The problem is that Mind Blower is rough and probably getting rougher by the month and year. When the restraint is stapled in your belly, you will shake up and down with this coaster against the restraint, which just isn't an enjoyable feeling. As for seat placement, I would prioritize wherever you think this coaster isn't as rough. The front row seems to offer floater airtime that helps to elevate you enough out of your seat to help give you a reprieve from the constant bouncing. As stated above, I also did get a truly wonderful ride in the very back row, as well as just inconsistent rides on this coaster in general. As much as I want to say that seat placement really, really matters, how tight your restraint is and just other random factors seem much more important in determining if you get a good or bad ride on this coaster, since I've experienced both, sometimes right after each other. I do have a preference for the right side of the train though, which is annoying if you have to put up your all you can drink cup, because this side helps you feel the banking on most of the larger overbanked turns. I also feel this side is slightly smoother, but again, that may just be luck on my part. After the chain lift, you turn around before dropping down Mind Blower's main drop. This is a decent drop, especially for its size, which is what you can expect 
from the gravity group. It's not amazing, but solid. Then you go through the beautiful inversion. Although it looks amazing off-ride, it really doesn't do much as a coaster element for me, other than getting points for uniqueness. It isn't whoopy or anything I don't like in an inversion. It just only offers its gimmickness. With the first drop, this is a nice one-two punch to start off this coaster. But with how it makes the restraints have to be super tight, I feel this would probably be a better coaster with a nice bunny hill here instead of the inversion, so that the restraints could be looser and you could enjoy the rest of the coaster. After the inversion, you navigate a quick low turnaround. This one is to the left, so it is better on the left hand side of the train. But you take this turn so quickly that it doesn't offer much in the way of forces and mainly just works to turn the train around. Then you navigate a bunny hill with a double down afterwards. This double down is what I think about when I think about the power and airtime through the various hills on Mind Blower Offer. After this double down, you navigate an S turn with a small bunny hill afterwards. Though small in size, most of these bunny hills will give the train a nice sense of airtime with a mix of ejector or floater airtime, which is kind of depending, but more on the floater side which helps add to the truly chaotic feel of this coaster. Then you navigate an overbank curve that turns right. This is why I prefer sitting on the right side of the train since it makes these overbanks more enjoyable. This is followed by two smaller speed hills that still offer decent airtime, but not as much as the previous section. A small S-Bend exists between these hills which jerks you around enough to add to the chaotic feel of the ride. Then you navigate the second overbank, again to the right. This is followed by a twist up to the left, with two bunny hills that are taken at a slow enough speed to offer nice airtime, despite their small size. Finally you go through a smaller bank turn, to the left before a small bunny hill for the final brake run. The brake run does look up directly at the inversion, which is a really great angle and helps you remember what is being marketed about this coaster. Mind blower is terribly rough. I like and can enjoy roughness as a nice gimmick, but the restraint bouncing and rubbing against me the whole ride hurts my stomach. But does this offer a unique gimmick or is something too harsh to be enjoyable? Depending on my rides, I've come off Mind Blower thinking both. Some rides will bounce you around and make you wonder if Mind Blower is enjoyable at all. Other times, despite the roughness, you will come off enjoying the experience, despite the constant bouncing. Of course, if you prefer smooth coasters, and can't stand rough ones, then there, there may be a little enjoyment to be had on this rough coaster. Overall, how good is Mind Blower? It has a solid layout that surprisingly hasn't been cloned, but where it ranks will vary wildly depending on how much one can deal with its roughness. Even I knock it down a few spots because of its roughness, and could see it fall even lower in future years if it becomes truly unrideable due to its roughness. For now, I have it right below B&M coasters, like Superman Krypton Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, and right above the enjoyable Schwarzkopf Scorpion at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. My blower is an enjoyable coaster that could compete with even bigger coasters if it just wasn't so rough. How enjoyable is Mind Blower to you? Do you find its roughness bearable? Is this coaster worth experiencing so that you can experience a wooden coaster with a loop? Let me know. And as always, cup and crap.